pray with me. Lord God, thanks for a year. Yes. Thanks for a good year where you have shown up in wonderful and beautiful ways. And Lord, as we gather here to celebrate, would you remind us again that it's all about you? Yes, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name, God's people said. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody grab a seat. You know, I was thinking, we're doing things a little different today, so sorry if this is messing with you right now. Um, I was thinking about this last year, 12 months. It's been kind of wild. I remember last summer, and you heard her version of the story a couple weeks ago when Michelle came, and she said, I, I need to meet with you. She came over to the house, met with uh, Karen. It's kind of, we were just engaging what she had to say, and she goes, I quit my job today. I, I want to come and work for you, even if you can't pay me, but I believe God has called me to help you start this church. And it was a huge leap of faith. And she didn't get paid at first, and then she got paid a little bit, and then God has provided. But we're so grateful, Michelle, so grateful that you were able to serve with us and lead our kids, and yeah, it's been awesome. I, uh, I didn't see her this morning, but uh, I went, I'll, I'll never forget last summer too, this was one of the most, I haven't shared this before, one of the most touching things that happened, my buddy Bruce down in um, Ellensburg passed away. And I went to um, his memorial service and I went back into the green room there to talk to his bride and the family. And we kind of hugged and cried a little bit together. And at that moment, she handed me a check. And it was a, a significant check that said, hey, our family wants to make sure this church gets going. I'm thinking, it's your husband's funeral. Why are you thinking about anyone else? But that's what she, they were doing. Her family wanted to leave a legacy here. Huge. I remember where there's this, uh, this gap that we had in talent where um, I, I have... The, I have the musical abilities of a peanut. Yeah. And I, I, I was going, how are we going to do a new church if we don't have musicians? My wife said, I know this, this youngster. And uh, anyway, long story short, I got together with Ashley. And I said, hey, Ashley, are you ready to come and lead a group? And some, not something she'd ever done before, but we just felt like it was the right thing at the right time. And I said, hey, just put together teams. But like I said, I warned her. If people don't like me, they leave the church. They won't come back. If they don't like you, they'll complain to you. <laughs> You've been pretty good this year, church. You're all right. Uh, there are so many stories, so much life change. God has done so much this last year. Amen. Last summer, of course, a core group of us felt the responsibility to keep a satellite campus going as our own independent church. And we together did an enormous pivot. To the best of our ability, we started off with lots of effort and little planning. And what's happened is that God has showed up. I mean, even if you look around the room, God continues to show up. And what we discovered is that God had a surprise for us that he wanted us to do something here for his kingdom in Upper County. And we're so grateful that we launched into this crazy adventure. Today marks our one year anniversary. <laughs> Th thank you. I, 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 one of you. Got it. That's good. Uh, this has been a hold on, God, what are you doing, where are we going year. Every week our staff team gets together and we tell stories. And I come for you a little bit shameful because I remember my mother told me early on as I would call her and tell her stories of what God was doing here. She said, you better write these down. And I didn't. Lesson, follow whatever your mom says, okay, people? <laughs> Obey your mommies. Uh, but it, it's, been, it's been a great year, and we feel like God has done something very special here. So today, it's a different type of service. It's a celebration service. And I'm not going to preach per se, but we will be hearing lots of stories of what God's been doing, um, like I already started with. And we're going to celebrate where we know we're supposed to celebrate. As we were preparing for the weekend... Um, we thought it would be great to keep the kids with us. So kids in the room, if you, if you can stay, we'd love to have you in here with us as we celebrate together. And here's how we're going to start. 
This is Jesus' church. Okay? It belongs to him. He is the head. He is in charge. We're just trying to steward what he's pulling together here. And we must celebrate and focus on him first. Because we exist for one reason. To follow Jesus the Christ, the Savior of the world. One of the cool things that has uh, happened here is just all the life change and stories and how people have been connected over this last year. And um, even our history. I I love it. I I think they'll tell the story better than I do. So watch what some of your Swifties say. I like Swiftwater Church because it has a good community. Swiftwater has blessed my family, has changed our life, connected us with so many people around the community, uh, and really pushed us closer to Jesus. Our kids really love coming to church. It's something they ask to go to pretty much every single day of the week. Um, So that's been a really cool part of our lives as we've welcomed our two children um, throughout the years. And it's really neat to be able to have them, have the community that we have, but also receiving God's love and learning about Him through the church. So that's been really neat to see. Swiftwater Church is my favorite. I love Swiftwater Church. It's real and authentic and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Swiftwater uh, Church community means a lot to me. My my family, my, my two daughters and myself, we got baptized at a potluck lunch. Swift Water Church has helped me improve my faith over this past year of knowing Christ. Uh, I was baptized here in, on Easter. Michelle is fun at Sunday school and I have lots of fun. I like Swiftwater Church because the people that come here always greet me and say nice things about me. I love Swiftwater Church because Marvin likes motorcycles and Todd likes bacon. I, I like Swiftwater Church because all the people are so nice. Um, and I also really like the music. Okay, I love the Swiftwater Church because of just the community that comes together here and the sermons and that my family got baptized on probably the best day of my life. Uh, we started coming to Swiftwater as newlyweds and new to Clay Elum, and we were so glad that we found a church that was so welcoming. One thing I really like about Swiftwater Church is the opportunity to get involved not only with the church. Um, like Angel said, we've been able to help with the soundboard and um, tech team in the back, but also being able to get involved in the community and hearing from different community leaders in the church. I got invited to Swiftwater Church at the beginning of this summer, and I attended when Todd was going through his question and answer section. It was amazing because what? He tells the truth, and that's why we're here. So thank you, Swiftwater. So it happened in April that I ended up sitting next to this one guy that I met there, and he said that, uh, are you okay? And I said, no, actually, I can't hardly breathe. Uh, My wife was out trying to get some water. That day I had uh, what I thought was heartburn. And uh, it turns out that within a few days I was having triple bypass surgery. We are so thankful that we have a small group here at Swiftwater that are praying for us and the church is praying for us. And the doctors said it was amazing that he did not have a heart attack. Um, Another thing that is just so great about Swiftwater is how The community is just so welcoming and I was able to get into a Bible study group with some girls around my age. (laughs) Swiftwater Church, they did this thing where they baptized me and it meant a lot to me and I'm super grateful that I got to do it because when I got out of that water, it was like a new life had begun for me and it was just so special. It's really special. This is why we moved to Clam. This is what we were looking for, and it's fully represented by this church and the pastor. You should go to Swiftwater Church because the community is really great. You should go to Swiftwater Church because it will expand your faith, it will give you a community, and it will give you an outlook on what it means to be a Christian.
like Swiftwater Church, ma'am? Why do you like Swiftwater Church? <laughs> Hey, this is Marvin, and I wanted to give you an idea of how God worked to create this amazing church. So for a couple years, a team from Mercer Creek Church in Ellensburg came to Roslyn on Sunday afternoons, and they led us in a time of worship. And most of the time, Todd brought the message. And we were up to about 60 people every week, and we had a good thing going. A few weeks after Easter in 2023, it was announced that Todd was out at Mercer. We were stunned. There were tears, anger, frustration. It made no sense. Attendance dropped about 30 people. I prayed and I gave a lot of thought to what was happening. It came to me that this was really an opportunity, an opportunity to start a new church. Others in the church felt the same way and we began to share this idea. I contacted an old friend, Monty Wright, who is the head of the Alliance Church in the Northwest. That is our denomination. To form a new church, Monty wanted us to have the approval of Mercer Creek. We would also need to show that we had support from the Roslyn congregation. And of course, Todd would need to decide if he was in. You can't make this stuff happen. So we prayed and we waited. Word spread and interest grew. Mercer approved our project and offered to help with the transition, including financial support. Todd began to show some interest and we collected names and contacted the Roslyn congregation to ask if they would support such a project. The response was overwhelmingly positive. So on Sunday, September 3rd, 2023, with no bank account and no money, we opened the doors to 190 people. This shows that God can do so much more than we could ever imagine or even think to ask for. Not by pushing us around, but by his gentle spirit working within us. God is always at work and he invites us to join him. He delights to show us the great things he is doing. Happy anniversary, Swiftwater. We started a year ago, and, and it was true. The first weekend, we didn't even have a bank account. Um, we were literally scrambling at every level to simply function as a church. Our transition was fast and crazy, and i got to be honest with you, kind of fun. Um, we've had a fun time doing this. And from the beginning, I've said the same thing. We are building the bicycle as we ride it. Have you heard that from me before? <laughs> yes, yeah, maybe too much. Um, Swiftwater, thank you for being so generous and supportive as we've been trying to build a new church here. It's hard to believe that in just one year, we have over 500 people in our database, people who have visited our church, and those are only the names we've collected. So we know God is continuing to bring new faces and be able to engage this. Uh, statistically, the average church plant after a year has 62 people. We're, we're a little bit more than that, which is pretty, pretty <laughs> cool. I mean, all, again, praise be to God. Um, it's been life-giving to watch. We've seen 20 people get baptized this year and over a dozen people give their lives to the Lord. So that's awesome. God is capturing hearts. At times, we are overwhelmed with children, and that's okay with us. Okay? Last week, we had 47 kids, and we were like, no! And not everybody's back from vacation yet, so we know. Uh, that's, again, another reason why next week we're going to two services, because it's simply we have to manage the chaos, right? Often, uh, with new churches, what happens, too, and I don't know if I've studied this for years, um, that uh, the churches typically are around the age of the pastor and younger. Well, I want you to know, we're diverse here. <laughs> Wait, is, is my buddy Dan here? Where's Dan? Is Dan here? He, Dan's 96 years old. What 96-year-old do you know comes to a church plant? It's awesome. Yeah. So again, we have every age possible represented. Financially, we are solid. Uh, God has blessed us. We now have over six months of, of financial reserves, and God has been truly, truly blessing this church financially. And I am so proud of our team here who's been both frugal and very consistent. I want to make sure that we can actually have some resources to make sure we can do what we want to do. Um, we have over 100 people serving in various parts of the church, which has been the reason that we can function. And I want to say specifically, there are two people whom we call staff that completely volunteer their time. And if they didn't do what they did, we wouldn't exist. So Marv Klein, would you stand up there in the back on the, we just stand up, say thanks to Marv. 
And uh, over here standing up is Chuck Johnson. So for these two guys, if, uh, if they didn't volunteer and do what they did to make this place, this place would never have happened. Um, from the beginning, God has given us marching orders that we are called to follow him. And it's been fun watching the mission of God really be fulfilled here. One of my old mentors used to say this phrase, keep the main thing, the main thing. And I get it. It matters that we keep what's most important primary. In faith, what's most in primary, what's the main thing is, has always been defined the same way. It's what Jesus says is love. Jesus was once asked, what's the most important commandment in the whole world? Like, you know, this was a Jewish culture, so they had 613 commandments. They said, which one's most important? And Jesus says, oh, that's easy. It's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. It's to love God and love your neighbor. That is the defining rule that should be in charge of everything you do. Jesus also said, people would know that we are Christians by our what? What is it? Is it our condemnation and yelling online? Is it our politics and our preferences? Is it our well-percolated theology or our strong dogmatic opinions? No, it's none of those things. Jesus says they, you will know they are Christians by their love. The proof of following Jesus, I want you to think about this. The proof of following Jesus is love. It's love. And loving God looks like worship of God and obedience to God. Love of one another is the capacity that we can have deep intimacy with one another and truly care about each other. It, it, put it, let me put it in different words. It means that we can actually know somebody, really know them, I mean know them, and still love them, <laughs> right? That's loving one another. And then there's loving others, and, and what that means is that we are willing to pay the price to reach out to those who are far from God, that we're willing to take on that cost, to give our resources, whether that's financial resources or time resources or whatever, that we're willing to say, no, other people matter so much that we're willing to give to them. I could take a week, well, weeks to unpack this, but bottom line, love is our ultimate ethic, and I want to say to you, thank you. Thank you that you have tried to fulfill this, and on a personal note, I remember when I started one year ago, well, it was... We're off by a day or two here, but we started. And I remember when I, that first message that said, hey guys, I'm coming in here limping and I'm gonna need your help. And this last year has been a healing year. And the reason it's been healing is for that same thing, love. Love does so much. But I also want us to realize the scope of our statements. We say this, imperfect people seeking to love God love others and love others to God. That's our mission here. That's why we exist. But I, I want you to focus for a second on those first couple words. Imperfect people. Everybody in this room has their hurts, their hang-ups, and their bad habits. And if we were to put your life on display, some of you would be, oh no, <laughs> right? We're, we're not delusional here. We are wounded and broken people in desperate need of a perfect savior, right? We will not play church. And that's what I love about this group that I've seen so far. We won't pretend or ignore or passive, passively aggressive exist. No, we really want to do whatever it takes to have hard conversations, to be real with one another, to honor one another, and simply move towards Jesus. I simply put, we are broken people following a perfect savior, and we're fine with that. We, church, listen to this, we need Jesus. Amen. We need a savior. And I see it year after year, person after person. When you see religious people fail and screw up all the time, you're like, why in the world would that happen? Why don't they just get it right? Well, here's why because we're not perfect and we need a perfect savior. We always need Jesus. He is the center of what we do. He is our reason for existence and we will follow him first and foremost. Amen. Our big hope, our big dream is that by doing that, 
it would give us the capacity to reach out to those around us who are far from God, that they too would find Jesus, that those far from God would come close to God. But let me warn you of something, especially if you're new around here. If you think you must be perfect, if you think that your version of theology is the only version, if you think that's what Christianity is about, you will be disappointed with Swiftwater Church. In fact, you might not even like it here. Because we like to live in reality here. And understand that we're building a bicycle as we ride it, and it's a little messy, and it's a little broken, and sometimes we do it right, and sometimes we do it wrong, and you know what? We're perfectly okay with that, because we know we serve the perfect Savior, and that's not us. So Swiftwater, this has been a very good year. It really has. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say, I'm going to use my spiritual authority to say this. I believe Jesus is pleased with this church. I really do believe that. And I also believe that the best is yet to come. Isn't that encouraging? I can't wait to see what God has in store for us. It's been good, but I think it's going to continue being good. You know, someone asked me once, hey, um, Are you guys kind of like in a honeymoon phase? How long do you think it's going to last? I go, you know what? If we keep listening to the promptings of the Spirit, if we keep following our Savior, if we keep remembering Him and putting Him first, I have seen no reason why it has to end. It's been good and it will stay good. Amen? Amen? Would you stand with me for prayer? I'm going to look at... And I'd love to say we have time to sing a song, but we don't, because I have a very important adventure we're going on this morning. Let me pray, then we're going on that adventure. Lord God, thank you for Swiftwater Church. Lord, thank you for all the people who are here. Thank you for all our church who's also on holiday right now. But Lord, you have brought together a body of people who are trying to figure out what love looks like. And as we do it in our sometimes broken, bruised ways, you still inject grace into the situation. Lord, would you grant this church lots of grace? And the scriptures also say, from your brother actually, it says, If anyone lacks wisdom, we need to ask of you. And so, Lord, I ask that you would give us wisdom for this next year. For each of our lives, for our collective church body, Lord, and just for what you want us to do, would you continue moving this church in the direction you want it to head? Lord, give us eyes to see. We ask in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.